What's new in Reaper 6.40? Today we're looking at changes to the metronome, to the reverb, convolution reverb, and project settings, and much more. Let's take a look. If you like this series, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. You'll get exclusive access to videos, behind the scenes looks, and uh, you support the videos that you love. And if you missed any of the previous videos in the series, I'd go all the way back to Reaper 5.0 with pretty much every change log that's come out. There'll be a link down in the description. We're gonna start this one off with changes to the project notes page. Project notes, support optional word wrap, and add title field in project settings info dialog accessible in render metadata wildcards as dollar sign title. So first project settings, we can go to file and then project settings. And under the notes page, we can see the, the checkbox for word wrap. And so I'll just put in a whole bunch of text here. And so when that's off, you get a horizontal scroll bar. And if I enable word wrap, that just locks it to the width of this text box. Next, there's title and author. And so let's call this um, EP Mastering Project. And author is John. So this title function is new. And you would use this most often in single song projects so you could have the song name in there, and that song name is different than the actual project name. So if your project name is um, My Song Mastering Version 3 um, and a date or whatever it is, your actual title of the song is still My Song. So I'll just hit OK on this and save it, and we can use those wildcards when rendering. So under File Name, I can use the new function dollar sign $Title. And that's going to put in the name of the, uh, you know, if it's a single song project, that would be the title. And also we can put in author. What you would get is whatever your title function in the project settings is, EP Mastering Project John. Yep, and that's completely separate from the dollar sign project wildcard, which is DistroKid Sponsor EP Mastering. So there you go, that's that's the new wildcard. It's super simple, but it's a nice convenience to have these things. And that brings us to the next function in the Media Explorer. Add action to rename file and display metadata for .rpp Reaper project files. So I'm gonna open up the Media Explorer. Here's that DistroKid Sponsor EP Mastering project file. And you can see here under title and artist, we've got the title that I put in there and the artist name in there. So the author becomes the artist name in this. And even the project notes that I put in there, just smashing on the keys, this becomes the description field in the Media Explorer. And then if we right click on any of these files, we can go to rename. Let's first um, show this in Explorer. And then in here, I will rename this file. I'll try to show them both at the same time. Come on, shouldn't be this difficult. So I'll just take away the, the number here. So it just says Reaper blog chemical. And if I go to finder, you can see that that's been renamed to take away the number. And I'll just change that back using the same function. And that fixes it in finder as well. Same thing on Windows, you know, just a convenient way because your Media Explorer search can have files from different folders in it, and you can manage them um, making simple file renaming commands inside of here. Does it work on multiple files? Let's find out. So if I right-click on four of these files and rename, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to put in a dash here to match the other files. And it only does the first one, so now we know. So for multiple files, not the fastest, but it is um, it is nice to just be able to do it because intuitively it should be there. And so that brings us to the next topic, which is the Reverb plugin. They added a Convolve mode to channel tools. Channel tool supports forcing the total channel count of impulse response. 
support setting channel offset directly when adding an IR file item, and support drag and drop of impulse file into plugin. And I think that's the most interesting thing and we'll, that's where we'll start. So I'm going to add the reverb plugin to a track. Down here in my Media Explorer, I have some reverb impulse responses and I'll just drag and drop. So much more intuitive than um, going to add and then going to browse and, um, and searching through the old way. It's much easier to manage your impulse response files from Media Explorer with all the tagging and metadata functions that are built in there. And it's actually amazing how few of my uh, impulse responses uh, in my library actually have any metadata. It's it's just a mess. So I'm I'm probably going to be spending days cleaning that up. I even see something here that I can fix with that rename function. There's an extra space at the end. I can remove that, which is super nice. I don't have to go and find that file in Finder. And the same with this one. Drag and drop, the first one will replace the file that's there. But if we add in another function like the channel tool and then drag in another file, that will add that in as a separate file. And in the 6.37 update video, I was talking about the channel tool and how it was a little convoluted, uh, no pun intended, for managing your channel counts. It is confusing and I think that this may be improved in the future. Why don't they just put in the channel assignment for each file as you're working on them? And they have done that now. So destination channel offset. This is my second impulse response within Reverb. I'm gonna set this to offset onto channel three. And so now you see this is a four channel impulse response with two different sounds for channels one and two and three and four. The channel tool isn't even necessary anymore to do just simple things like choosing which file goes to which channel. One of the new functions that they put in here is Convolve. So um, let's, let's hide the second file for now. So we got file, we've got the output destination set to one. Um, under channel tool, we can go to source channel one, channel count one, destination channel two, and let's do a Convolve function. And now that looks like that, which I believe is combining the channels one and two together. Uh, we can also reassign the maximum number of channels. So instead of automatic, we can set this on one. And so now channels one and two are combined into one, not just using mono summing, but using the convolution function. We can use the subtract from function. We can use the add to function. We can use the copy function and the swap function. So this is definitely something that like is a nice to have or a fun experiment sort of thing. It's not something I've explored yet, but yeah, don't think that this is something you need to know and understand in order to use the reverb plugin. Most of the functions that you need are just within the file function here. And one thing I forgot to show in the 6.37 video, it was a pretty long video already, um, but what I wanted to show was the reverse function. You can actually assign channels to be reversed. So having this on zero will affect all channels. So I'll just do channel two. And so I've got forward on the left, reversed on the right, forward for channels three and four. If I also want to reverse channel four, for example, I'll just go to add reverse and set this to channel four. And so I've got channels one and three normal, channels two and four as uh, reversed. How does that sound? I don't know. So we we're only hearing channels one and two there, but you know, that's, uh, that's what it does. So lots of nice updates for the Reverb plugin, making it more versatile, making it more of a creative sound design tool and improved workflow for surround sound work. All right, so now we're going to look at the metronome. The change log says, metronome add actions to set metronome speed to 1x, 2x, 4x, support 2x, 4x, click speed multiplier, update click source peaks display when updating metronome settings or click source properties. 
The main great new feature that they added here is just a multiplier. I have a quick source item, which you can find under the insert menu. And this is just essentially a metronome item. So you can, you know, you can put it wherever you want. You can have gaps in between. You can have different patterns per item, things like that. Right now, standard metronome, standard A, B, B, B pattern. That's what we're used to, but we can also multiply this by two. So now it's twice as fast. Without any workarounds or anything, it just automatically does that for us. And also the quick source peaks update as soon as you change that. So if we zoom in here, you can actually see that within one bar, there are four of the primary beats in there. So super quick and easy and convenient to change the, uh, the speed of the metronome now. And briefly, let's just split this item. And if we want to change the click source separately, we go to source properties. And in here, we can uncheck the option to follow the tempo and we can multiply the tempo of just that one. And it goes like that. Uh, we can assign default to the click source and then new click source items that come in will have that multiplier in there, different patterns or anything that you need. If we check the action list, there are three actions for quickly setting the metronome speed without opening that window. There are two more quick things that I wanna mention here. Track meters add option to measure LUFS on first two channels only. And so that's very simply right-clicking on a channel meter, going to meters, and then check the option LUFS measures first two channels only. So if it's a 12 channel track with media using any number of those meters, you can now set that to only the first two. And lastly, sub projects write equals start time to rendered file as BWF preferred start position. I've got a project here that has a bunch of audio files and some of the tracks only are used briefly in one spot. I'm going to freeze this folder track here, freeze it, uh, no, I'm, I'm not gonna freeze it. I'm going to move it to a sub project. Move tracks to new sub project. So I rendered that. And here's my sub project folder. And here is the equal start set at the start of that item. There's my equals end. It's about one second after. And yeah, so I've consolidated two tracks and their effects plus the folder track into a single file, which is here. So there's my percussion bus. If I move this item out of its original position for some reason, import it into another project, something like that, I can right click on the item, go to item processing, and then move item to source preferred position, BWF start offset. And that's gonna put it into the position it was originally before being turned into a sub project rather than having no start offset set to begin with. Yeah, and if we override this by, let's say we put our start offset at bar 58, save, that's going to re-render and update this file in our project. And it looks like this now. And the start offset uh, is there. So that's really cool and a very helpful addition to subprojects. And so that's it for this update video. If you missed any of the previous ones, going all the way back to Reaper 5.0, there is a uh, playlist link in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.